morning everybody it's very very wet and very very windy here today um, so if you hear any rattling or very loud noises I think there's some thunder predicted and some lightning and all sorts of stuff so don't worry the building isn't falling down around me or anything um, I've got a corrugated roof and it and it's much noisier than normal okay so today I'm going to show you how to do a simple pastel um, landscape using just black and white and grey for now so just tonal uh, monochrome and um, I'll probably do another tutorial uh, using colour later on I just want to talk you through a couple of things I've got a piece of um, just plain sugar paper here you can use all sorts of things uh, you've got from the expensive you've got very expensive pastel matte paper um, which is wonderful to use but very expensive I, I don't use it very often because it's too expensive for me um, but you can use watercolor paper anything that's basically got a bit of texture to it don't use cartridge paper some cartridge paper is really good quality and has a bit of texture to it and you can use that obviously but um, generally something that's got a little bit of, of roughness to it and it's got it's, that's called tooth and that'll just hold the pastel um, a bit better than a smoother surface but like I said um, sugar paper is good enough um, I tend to sort of just stick it down I've put a border of masking tape around the outside so I can have a clean edge once I'm finished um, and I've got some different kinds of uh, chalks here so you can use normal ch chalk you can use pastel soft pastels just not oil pastels uh, oil pastels have oil in them so they behave differently and I'll do another demonstration with regard to that so these are called compressed charcoal um, sorry compressed chalks um, and they range this is a nice set because it goes through all the greys from white through to light grey to dark grey to black so I'm going to use mostly those today and then you've got these things called Conti pastels and they generally are square uh, you can see that they're square as opposed to round with these ones here um, and these are harder and they're really good because you can sort of use them for fine edges and definition whereas these tend to break down on you a little bit um, because they're very soft these have just been as it says on the tin compressed so they're much more compact and harder as a result here comes the rain <laughs> so also I've got some little thin sticks of charcoal and some thicker sticks of charcoal here the only thing with charcoal is that it is very pale in color you can't really get the dense blacks and uh, so it just gives you a very sort of mid-tone gray especially when you smudge it so let's start so I'm just going to take the white and I'm going to draw a line across here like so and I usually break up my chalks so that I can use them more easily and you can use them on the side um, you can see they just when they're new which these are they just need a little bit of time just to get going so you wear them down to an edge like that I've chosen to work on coloured paper just so that you can see um, what's going on. Obviously, if I put white onto white paper, um, then you can't really see what's going on. So I've chosen to use a colour. It's nice to use a colour with pastel, um, just because uh, it's quite annoying if you put like a, a solid blue sky down and you've got bits of white showing through. Um, it can be quite annoying and fiddly to get rid of. So. However, you can sort of take benefit from that also, from the under colour, and just use that as part of your tonal range in your images that you're creating. So I'm just making a light sky. This is going to be a really quick one, everybody, because I want, you, I want to do some shorter... I know that my tutorials are, can be quite long, um, and I just want to do some shorter ones for a change. So make sure you get plenty of chalk, press hard. Don't press too hard with the sugar paper because it's cheap, it will rip. So just be careful, um, but make sure that you do still press hard. 
so that you get and I'm just rubbing now if you don't want to use your fingers you can get various blending tools on the market um, you can just simply use a piece of cloth or a piece of tissue or a blending tool so they come in various forms I haven't got any in front of me but there's some that are just rolled up paper um, and some that are uh, sort of almost like pencils with rubber tips on them so you can avoid using your fingers I know, I know that not everybody enjoys this process that's actually sorry that's a dirty white there that I'm using <laughs> right so let's go up a, go up a notch and just put some darker gray into it like I said this is just a tonal landscape so I just want to make the horizon a little bit darker than the rest of the sky just a touch and what that'll do is it'll just give it a little bit of depth just in the sky there like that I'm going to put some in that top right hand corner so that it draws the eye up now you can work into this more if you want to but I'm just going to start blocking things in so I'm going to take that same color and I'm just going to block the rest of the image so we're just roughly covering up these colors the color of the paper so again I'm using the side it's much more uh, gentle than using the tip you get a, a more defined mark when you use the tip so just be careful of that so again I'm going to go slightly darker and I'm going to start at the horizon and I'm going to go all the way along that horizon like that keep your line nice and straight if you can and I'm going to work down and I'm going to put a slight curve to suggest the edge of a field it may be that we do this a bit darker later on but we'll see how it goes we'll see how it works with the perspective okay um i'm gonna go for a slightly darker if it gets a bit chalky just don't be frightened of blowing away some of the chalk down there like that and then i'm gonna put a little area of chalk just coming down here like that and again I'm just going to blend that in using my fingers just soften it up you can make it harder by adding more if you need to and you can use the sort of more of the edge if you want to be a little bit more precise I'm just lifting the pastel up slightly so that the edge of the pastel is there you can see that the line is more defined then so down there with the with the pastel the darker pastel and I'm going to go back in with this gray just in here a little like that I'm just going to smooth this in so if you don't have these gray pastels you can try this just using black and white and, and mix the greys as you're going along so have a go with that well, there's a little bit of a dark a lighter area there and there's a lighter area coming down here and a lighter area coming down here so I'm just going to put a little bit of white back in just to lighten those areas up okay and we're going to take the darker color again in fact that's black I think so let's just use this for now I'm just going to put some darker tones in down the foreground and quite rough because I want this to sort of indicate that there might be some sort of grasses down the foreground and I'm pressing with my fingers upwards rather than sideways and pressing you can also go up with your pastel like that so if you use that movement and just press upward blow it off I'm going to put a slightly lighter top onto that like that okay 
Um, let's see now. I want to make that distant horizon line a little bit darker. That's where the bit where it goes up into the sky. So I'm just going to blend that in a bit and I'm going to put a little bit of darkness just in that area there. Just so that it almost lifts the sky forward. A little bit of darkness there and a little bit of darkness here. Okay, so once we start getting the rough, um, the, the areas blocked in more or less, we can start thinking about detail. So I'm going to use a black, but I'm going to use a black soft pastel just for now. And I'm just going to go along that horizon. Um, the reason why I'm using a soft pen, a soft pastel is so that I can blend it. The thing is with the um with the compressed charcoal is that it tends not to blend very easily so i'm just going to run a line along here and i want this line to be reasonably soft for the moment just a line along there and then a line coming down there but again i'm going to try and blend a little into just put a little bit of dark just in that corner there. Um, there's a, a patch of darkness just about here that goes into the field. So I'm just going to put that in. So this is using the black. Um, and then down here we've got some sort of vertical like linear areas. So we're just, and they're just again describing the foreground grassy sections in a bit more detail than they would be in the distance. So again, just just put them in and smudge upwards like so. Okay, so here we have our landscape. Um, I'm now going to move on and put some colour in using the compressed charcoal. So I've got some, again, I've got the same range, but in greys here. So we've got a hedge line here. So I'm just going to, again, just put in vertical lines and I'm gonna reduce them down as they go away into the distance. So vertical, like that. And again, just smudge a little, just soften them a little bit. And then we've got some trees. So we're going to go up. So I'm pressing quite hard with the corner of my, my compressed charcoal here. And I'm just going to put in one tree structure and another. And I'm going to do three here, going off into the distance, like so. So I'll be frightened of making them a little bit wider as you come forward but not too wide because they're still in the distance these trees um, turn the charcoal until you get a nice sharp point when you've worn the point down don't then continue with it because you'll end up with sort of stumpy shapes that you don't want so I'm just turning the point, the, the charcoal, until I get a fine line and then I'm just going to put some of these branches in this, on this tree. And you can see that they're not, these are not full uh, length. I've broken them up again so they're easier to manage, for me anyway. That's, that's my preference, but if you feel like you want to leave them whole, then leave them whole. Use a sort of a, a wavy line like so and you'll get some more interesting sort of, almost like a jerky mark making with your compressed charcoal, like that. 
and you'll get some more natural looking branches if you sort of twist but also make sure that these points are nice and fine especially when you're doing the top branches okay remember that twisting motion again uh, practice if you feel like you don't want to just draw these trees straight on then just have a practice on a piece of paper before you start putting them in and then you won't feel so worried and there are some trees just on the horizon in the distance so I'm just going to draw some simple structures here and, and basically just put a little bit of fuzzy mark making just at the top of them the, the the trees are quite dense so put a few uprights in there before and just pat at it with your finger <clears throat> and that'll give the illusion of it being in the distance <laughs> okay you can put some darker bits in if you want to especially at the base of the trees just pat them again just pat them with your finger like that and then you've got your trees and if you feel like you need to redraw that horizon then just put that back in okay now we've got some um sort of fuzzy bit of fuzziness on these trees also so i'm just going to take my black charcoal ch uh, chalk pastel and i'm just going to put in some little so I'm just literally rubbing it onto my finger and I'm just going to put in some little almost circuit. It's funny you can see your fingerprints on them, it's so nice. Just on the edges of those branches and mainly at the top, Don't you can put a little bit down there but not too much. Mainly on the top area like that. Okay, there we go. And uh, lastly, we're just going to put in some fencing. So there's some fencing coming down into this field here and it is old fencing so it's very um, sort of broken looking so you don't have to make it really <clears throat> super fencing just, just put in some rough lines and there's another one just here which is a bit bigger sorry that broke i pressed a bit hard it's a bit bigger it's in the foreground like that so it's coming towards you put a little bit of um white on that one at the top and down the side just to give it a highlight same with this one you can just put a highlight in with a bit of white pastel and maybe we could put some a suggestion of fencing just along like that going off into the now this fencing is great because you can see through it normally I wouldn't advise putting fencing along the foreground like this because it causes a blockage but you can see that works quite nicely okay so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put in some highlights in the foreground so I'm going to use um, some light grey I'm just going to put in some more detailed grasses just in the foreground just to bring that area forward and you know that's that's about it really just have a little bit of a play there's no reason why you can't go up into these areas and just put in some little highlights here and there but once you get into the distance you wouldn't need those descriptions you know it would go blurry so you could put a little bit of a highlight down the sort of left hand side sorry right hand side of these trunk lines but you wouldn't see any highlights in the distance um, like I said you can just put a couple of sort of marks in this field but keep the marks small and flick them make sure that they go paler as they go off into the distance just a few suggestions of grasses here and there but you can have a little bit of a play with that and put on as much detail as you like but that's the main theory so 
have a go. Um, one thing I will say is, if I do just bear with me a minute, is that there's a good trick for fixing um, pastel, is blow off all the, the excess chalk and then just use some hairspray. Uh, you can get fixative from art shops, but it's very expensive. But if you just seal it with a bit of hairspray, like so, you can see that it darkens the pastel up, which is really lovely. Um, it gives it a coating so it doesn't rub anymore. So you need to be finished, but that's it finished. I will just let that dry off a little bit and then I'll remove this and then I'll put a final picture on at the end. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, do all the usual things for this tutorial. It really helps. And thanks for watching. Bye.